they hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hey, what's up with the family? It's Hot Boxing Minute. Let's talk boxing. First order of the day, let's talk about the fights that just went down this last Saturday. More specifically, the Devin Haney fight. Devin Haney won via 12 round unanimous decision. He pretty clearly outboxed Jorge Linares. Jorge Linares, at 35 years old, is still a dangerous threat in the lightweight division. He's a three division champion and obviously needs to be respected. Devin Haney's performance, let's talk about this. First and foremost, I wanna talk about the good things I saw in Devin Haney's performance the other night. Let's talk about Devin Haney's jab. I think out of the four young kings or the four, the four new young kings in the lightweight division, when I talk about the four young kings, I'm talking about Tank Davis, Javante Davis, Teofimo Lopez, the man who is the unified champion currently. He's only missing that WBC green belt that Devin Haney just defended. And obviously Ryan Garcia, King Ryan. Out of all three of them, I think it, it can be arguably stated that Devin Haney does have the best jab out of all of them. He definitely looked like the polished product in that fight with Jorge Linares. He showed that he can maintain that technique and solidly point fight for at least the first nine rounds. I wouldn't even say it was point fighting because he wasn't even keeping a long distance. It was clear that Devin Haney was addressing his critics in his performance against Jorge Linares last night. By the way, he stood there in front of Jorge Linares and essentially, I wouldn't say it was quite phone booth fighting, but it was definitely solid mid-range and up-close fighting on both of their parts. I don't know if that's such a good thing. Devin Haney in earlier interviews said that he fully intends to do the whole fighting career Floyd Mayweather style and fight on his bicycle essentially and winning by points and he has no desire to please fans at all. And I kind of knew that was going to be a mistake for him to have that kind of mindset going into his career because Floyd Money Mayweather, he earned the right to become money after his hands started breaking, but he used to be pretty boy Floyd in the gutter. So all these young up and coming fighters that think they're going to point fight their way into perfection in history like Floyd don't really quite understand the whole history of how Floyd became who he was. Either way, Devin Haney was maintaining the whole fight up until the very closing seconds of that 10th round. Now, for those of you who didn't see it, Jorge Linares let off a combo towards the end of that 10th round and caught Devin Haney with a right hand, and it rocked Devin Haney. He got stanky legged. It was a good thing it was in the last five seconds of that 10th round, but going into his corner, it was clear that Devin Haney was visibly wobbled. Coming out into the 11th round, Devin Haney clearly didn't have his feet still under him. For the whole duration of pretty much that whole round, Devin Haney was clutching on for dear life to Jorge Linares, hugging. And so now we got memes online calling him Devin the Hug Haney. Hey, I'm not here to attack the guy. I just want to talk about the performance. Either way, it definitely wasn't a good look. It wasn't a good look for boxing period because the referees seemed to call out Jorge Linares on every single minor infraction. I remember Jorge Linares barely had grazed the back of Devin Haney's head. The referee split them up and even had the, the time to stop Jorge Linares and tell him about that singular punch to avoid trying to punch Devin Haney in the back of the head. But then as soon as Devin Haney's grabbing and he's grabbing an entire round, no points were deducted. Personally, I think a point should have been deducted for excessive grabbing. Wouldn't have mattered anyways. That one point deduction for excessive grabbing, I don't think would have been enough to overcompensate for the fact that Devin Haney clearly outclassed the older veteran, Jorge Linares. So congratulations to Devin Haney. He had his first real test of his career. I think that's one thing a lot of boxing fans have been wanting to see from Devin Haney is for him to step up in competition. He got a grizzled veteran, Jorge Linares. Jorge Linares has been there with fighters the likes of Teofimo Lopez. I'm sorry, not Teofimo Lopez. Goodness, where's my mind at? Vasil Hitech Lomachenko. He even had that fight with Luke Campbell. But um, I would even go so far as to say that Ryan Garcia's performance against Luke Campbell was better than Devin Haney's performance against Jorge Linares. And hey, this is just my opinion. It isn't law. It doesn't have to be everybody else's opinion. Feel free to let me know if you disagree with that one in the comments section. But Devin Haney definitely showed that he was a finished good product. I mean, he's not finished. Every fighter can improve on their skills, but as far as being a polished appearance and polished in his form, it looks really good. He looked really, really good for the first nine rounds of the fight. He could have done without the 10th and the 11th round. He actually, I would even say, you could slightly give him the edge into the 10th round, aside from the very ending where he lost his balance. The 11th round, clearly that was Jorge Linares' round. Devin Haney seemed to have get his footing under him for that 12th round and rode out that storm quite well. Devin Haney got an incredible learning experience. Maintain that O. Still has his WBC belt. What's next for Devin Haney? Fans are screaming 
are screaming for the Teofimo Lopez fight. We want to have an undisputed fighter in the lightweight division. Will it happen? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Gervonta, I'm pretty sure Teofimo, and I'm pretty sure Ryan Garcia are salivating at the opportunity to get a crack at what they perceive to be Devin Haney's vulnerable chin. So we'll see what happens in the future. I think he's going to have a, a, a fight with one of those guys at the very least. Who knows? Maybe he fights a Javier Fortuna after Javier Fortuna gets that Jojo Diaz fight. We'll have to wait and find out. On to the next subject. Let's talk about Nonito Donaire, who beat Father Time last night. Fourth round stoppage of, I, come, I have to write this down, Nordin Ubali. Great name. I mean, I can, I can pronounce Nonito Donaire. Of course, I'm Filipino, so I know who all the Filipino fighters are. Fourth round stoppage of Nordin Ubali. And he did it in emphatic fashion. You got to give it up to Nito Donaire. He beat Father Time. He is 39, 38. Okay, hold on. Let me get the ages right. There's something in the water that has all these Filipino fighters fighting in the old age. You know, Nito Donaire is 38. Dani Nietes just came back. He's 39. Manny Pacquiao is about to fight Earl the Truth Spence at 42 years old. So clearly, if you maintain yourself and take care of your body, you can't fight until your older age or... Who knows what, what's going on there, but he won in emphatic fashion. What is next for Donito Donaire? It was a great fight, by the way. If you didn't see it, Donito Donaire fought like a veteran. He didn't waste a single shot. Pretty much gave Nordin Ubali a clinic on what it meant to effectively counterpunch. There was not a single punch wasted. Every single punch had a purpose that Donito Donaire was throwing. And it was, you could hear the thuds. It was loud. It was shocking. And I would even argue to say that that, Nordin Ubali, Nonito Donaire fight was bang for bang, pound for pound, more entertaining than the Devin Haney fight. That's just my personal opinion. Now, after this performance from Nonito Donaire, what's next? Well, in the Bantamweight division, we got two other big title belt holding sharks in that division. Obviously, Monster Inway is the one pretty much everyone wants to see is that rematch of that last fight they had. If I remember correctly, it was a fight of the year. It was a really good fight. Nonito Donaire, Monster Inway, and then there's also John Vidal Casimero. I would lean towards Nonito Donaire's winning a fight with John Real Casimero, strangely enough, even though Nonito Donaire is the older man in that situation. Against Monster Inway, I might be inclined to go in Monster's direction on this one, but hey, big ups to the Filipino legend, four division champion, Nonito Donaire came through in stunning fashion. Nice little uppercut, put Ubali down for the count. One last thing before I end this off. Manny Pacquiao, the legend, 42 years old, as we all know, is going to be fighting Errol Spence Jr. in August. He's currently a 5-1 to one betting odds. This last top 10 pound for pound rating that was released by ESPN didn't even include Manny Pacquiao in the lineup. Personally, I agree with all of those. I disagree strongly with all of those. Not agree. Disagree strongly with all of those. Number one, why is Manny Pacquiao a 5-1 to one underdog against Earl the Truth Spence? I agree. Manny Pacquiao should be the underdog going in against a young, at their present peak, pound for pound fighter like Errol Spence Jr. But should he be a 5 to 1 underdog? Should the fighter right now in the game with the best resume, hands down, be a 5 to 1 underdog? Are we not yet believers in the magic of Manny Pacquiao? I know I am. Either way, let me know in the comment section what you think about him being a 5 to 1 betting odds. Why is Manny Pacquiao not in the top 10 on, P on ESPN's pound for pound list? I can't be the only one that finds that to be a little bit disturbing. Associated Press Writers of America, what are you doing? What are you smoking? What are you sniffing to not put Manny Pacquiao at least in the top 10? Can he get some breathing room at nine at the very least? Give him a 10 spot? Should he not be in the top five? Did he not just get done beating one time Keith Thurman? Yes, it was two years ago, but still, are, are fighters not judged on the body of work in their resume and their last fight? Just an opinion, folks. I think Manny Pacquiao should definitely be higher on that list. Let me know what you think, folks, in the comments section. Hit like if you haven't already done so. Press follow. Follow me on TikTok if you haven't already done so. I'm trying to get to 50,000 followers. I'm this close, y'all. Same moniker, Hot Boxing Minute. Follow me on IG, Yellow Boy Magic. Anyways, y'all, one love. I'm out.